Australian manufacturer has been in business for over 50 years. However, chances are you've never heard of them. That's because they have only ever built up to 800 cars across 11 different models, five of which were produced at scale, and the last recorded vehicle ever built was a supercar in 2019. This company is called Bolwell Cars. It all started in the late 1950s with a young Campbell Bolwell who purchased his first car being a poorly maintained 1937 Ford V8 sedan for 50 pounds. And if you were wondering, Australia's currency was the pound before the now Australian dollar. Campbell and his younger brother Graham, who 15 at the time, borrows this sedan for some thrashing around the local state forest to impress his mates, only to bring it back in an unrecognizable state. Lucky for Graham, when returning to his brother was not met with anger, but an opportunity to help Campbell with a project car using what was left of the broken Ford. They would set out to learn how to use new modeling material called fiberglass to create small parts alongside traditional panel work. The ambitious brothers physically changed the shape of the vehicle with a light tubular frame they welded up. The gearbox, interior and steering were completely overhauled to create a two-seater sports car which would be named the Bolwell MK1 marking the very first vehicle built by Bolwell. Lucky for Campbell there was no social media at the time so he wouldn't be procrastinating fascinating on his next project. With this momentum, he sold the MK1, saved up some more funds, and started the next project by 1960. This project would be called the Bolwell MK2, based on an MG J2 chassis and with a 1.2 litre Ford 10 engine and gearbox, this vehicle would be built from scratch using all the skills learnt from the MK1. Although the MK2 had less horses, it could still accelerate at the same rate thanks to Campbell's lightweight design, but lacked top speed falling short of 40 miles per hour. Another fun fact, like we used pounds as Australia's currency, we also used miles per hour, which later was changed to kilometers per hour. So momentum continues in 1962 with the MK2 sold and the next project in motion. Campbell would put his mechanical skills to the test while Graham would experiment further with fiberglass to create a lightweight sports car resulting in the creation of the Bolwell MK3. This would be the first full fiberglass body built by Graham and would use an Austin Healey as a donor car for the chassis. This Austin Healey would actually come with a modified 3.5 4 litre inline 6 Jaguar Mark 7 engine and gearbox, which in a custom built MK3 would achieve a standing quarter mile in 13.9 seconds. For comparison, the established 1960s 4.2 litre inline 6 Jaguar Type E would only achieve a standing quarter mile in around 15 seconds. This collaborative project between the brothers was again sold but officially marked the start of Bowell cars as it was was a great success. At the age of 20 and with 200 pounds in the bank, Campbell left his job and would now be open for business in Melbourne, Australia with his brother Graham. Now working as a team, they would start to develop a fiberglass kit which they could produce at scale, calling this model the MK4. Inspired by the Lotus 11, the fiberglass body would be a challenge as new techniques had to be tested, thus the process was simply trial and error relying on plaster molds to make it work. The MK4 was aimed at enthusiasts with the ability to assemble the car themselves and it was designed to accommodate a range of stock parts including the Triumph Herald front suspension, standard 10 brake clutch as well as other components, Morris minor petrol tank, Fiat 1100 battery and the Ford Kent engine. These sold surprisingly well at an affordable £198 each. Therefore, the decision was made to slightly enhance the design in an attempt to increase the price by £100, which would later be known as the MK4B or the GT version. Overall, between 1962 and 1965, up to 80 MK4 kits were sold. The MK5 kit soon followed, which put Bowell cars on the map as a specialist vehicle manufacturer. The MK5 chassis was designed to suit Holden FX and FJ parts, including the 2.2 liter inline six engine and three-speed gearbox, allowing Bowell to target a much wider audience, 
selling each kit for 660 Australian dollars. And that's when Australian dollars was a thing. These parts were extremely available and they would now supply parts and kit add-ons, which would add up to a total additional cost of 1,360. Selling up to 75 kits between 1964 and 1967, Bowell cars had become popular, but more needed to be done to get their names out. With brand exposure in mind, they will start designing and building a once-off model called the SR6, which would be only for racing purposes, all while continuing to design the next model for the public. Housing a modified 2.2 liter inline six engine mated to a Hewland gearbox within a tubular frame and aluminum body, they would take influence by Lotus's suspension methods just to tie everything together. With the help from a well-known Australian race car driver, Alan Newton, the road registered SR6 would be fine-tuned and finished. Alan would then be chosen to race around Melbourne's Calder Park racetrack, allowing the Bowell brand to be on show for everyone to see. Only one SR6 would ever be built and years later sold to a founding member of the Bowell Car Club. In 1967, Bowell was ready to showcase their newest model, the MK7, and they would be given the opportunity to do so on the front cover of a popular magazine, Sports Car World. I'm not sure why I said it that slow. Sports Car World. Anyway, it was more refined than the MK5 and again, largely designed around common Holden components, including a three liter inline six Holden HR186X2 engine and was recommended to be mated to a Triumph 200 gearbox. Keeping in mind, this is still a kit. It was priced at $899 per kit, however could reach up to $1,400 Australian dollars with optional parts and add-ons. As their best-selling model to date, they sold up to 450 kits between 1967 and 1972, making Bowell Cars Australia's fifth largest vehicle manufacturer at the time. At that time, Australia didn't have many manufacturers locally anyway. But for Campbell and Graham, it was a huge achievement and you'd think it's only up from here. But obviously you'd probably know about them if that was the case. So just keep following. Up until then, Boa were very popular for kit cars, but that would quickly change with the next model called the MK8 Nagari, which started production in 1969. It was the first model which had a name rather than a number, but the biggest difference was that the Nagari would be a fully built production car rather than a DIY kit. However, kits were available later in its production run. It was designed to incorporate Ford components instead of Holden parts and now included either a 4.9 liter V8 small block or a 5.8 liter V8 Windsor or Cleveland engine, made it to a Ford top loader gearbox. Some were even built with either an inline six or an inline four engine. The game changer for Bowell was that parts could now be sourced new from Ford directly, which had never been the case in previous models. Youngest brother Graham also just returned from working with Lotus, and instead of designing the body in one piece, he would opt for a separate body panel structure to tie everything together. Chassis design for the Nagari may also have been influenced by Lotus, as it shared minor characteristics with the Lotus Elan. Selling at a price point up to 6,875 Australian dollars, they did not sell as quick as prior models due to rising oil prices as well as other economical factors. To entice sales, they introduced a soft top version in a hope that it would sell more cars, but in total only 18 soft top models were sold along with around 100 standard models between 1970 and 1970. Four. To further punch them while they're down, Australian design rules were also tightened and new safety standards would be introduced, which was not financially viable for a small car maker like them, therefore seizing the car production for the company. Bowell Cars would quickly evolve into Bowell Corporation, which continues to this day, designing and producing a wide range of fiberglass products.
products. However, this shift would cause Graham to leave the company to continue his own automotive pursuit, therefore leaving Campbell in charge. But that's not the end, because by 1978, Bowell Cars makes a return, but now with the resources and nameplate of Bowell Corporation. Campbell wanted to create a new model to serve as a promotional kit car to generate publicity around Bowell's expertise in fiberglass and composites. It would be aimed at a global market calling it the Ikara, which included a detailed 180 page construction manual and estimated prices for all the DIY parts required. They would design the Ikara to house power plants from various models including Volkswagen, Holden, Renault, Honda or Mazda amongst other brands to maintain a global reach. Depending on what powertrain was chosen, the Ikara could cost up to 10,000 Australian dollars to construct, but Bowell offered assistance to anyone in Australia who required help building it as part of the deal. Only 12 Ikaras were sold between 1979 and 1980, however in 1985 a Greek company would purchase the rights and tooling for the purpose of local manufacturing. And this is where Bowell cars go quiet for a little bit. It wouldn't be until over 20 years later in the 2000s when Campbell Bowell set out to design the very first Bowell supercar called the Nagari 300. The idea would spring up during a Bowell wind turbine contract in Canada as a new composite infusion technique used to build wind turbine blades would enable the vehicle to be lightweight yet high strength. This new turnkey model would feature a fully built 3.5 litre V6 2GR FE engine from the Toyota Orion mated to either a 6 speed auto or manual gearbox in a lightweight chassis with 60 40 weight distribution. They claim it accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.5 seconds. However, offering an optional supercharger to shave that time by 0.5 seconds. Upon announcement, Bowell would immediately take deposits, which unfortunately would be quickly returned when it became apparent that the Australian government would take up to four years to approve the compliance detail, allowing it to be sold to the public. The vehicle was eventually ready for sale by 2010, but only a handful were built and sold to date. Bowell didn't just stop here as it was discovered that the Nagari 300 could fit a V8 engine with very little modification but almost double the power of the V6. With a few tweaks there was sufficient room for a 6.2 litre Chevrolet LS3 supercharged engine mated to an Audi 0B1 6 speed manual gearbox. Unofficially the Nagari 500 was said to achieve 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in under 3 seconds. The one and only Nagari 500 was revealed at Melbourne's Motor Classica in 2019 and to date no more models have ever been manufactured. They did however release promotional material listing alternate engine options for the Nagari 500 which includes a 6 litre LS2 V8 or an electric version using the Tesla powertrain. I assume that with the right amount of money they probably can still manufacture a Nagari 500 or 300 however I'm not wealthy enough to find out. In fact Bowell still advertises on their website a made-to-order arrangement for the Nagari 300 at a price point starting at around 200,000 Australian dollars. If that price point is still correct, it's actually not that much of a bad idea comparing to other supercars in the market. In terms of Bowell history, this is pretty much it and I'm very aware someone's going to call me out for some of my pronunciation, but that's just how it is. If you like this video, go and check out my other videos on my channel as I have a few that are similar and make sure you follow my channel so you can keep up to date with all my new videos thanks